name's Jet, and this is Game Design 2, and we build games and animations on the computer. Yeah, we actually teach two major programs here. The one that you're currently in here for is uh, Game Design, and it's an introductory course, and it's one of those that I always tell the students when they come in here. It's a course that just gets their appetite a little bit wet to be able to come in, find an idea, find out if they are interested in game design, and continue that throughout their career. We use stick figure animation called Pivot to create animations with stick figures. Mainly the routine is in here is we come in, we open up a PDF file or the hard copy of what we're doing, and then we try to do it. If we need help, we can call on one of our other friends that know how to do it or call the teacher over so he can help us a little better. Uh, we use Pivot as a stick man software and another one is Game Factory. Game Factory, we made a block breaker game that was 2D. We were able to make it 3D, but it was a little more complicated for people starting out. And we just got off of Pivot, which is a freeze frame stick animation. What you do with that is you can make Stickman run, jump, you can put a background in to give them characters. Uh, this is a Stickman animation where there's you build it and they're playing soccer or and they you can make them do whatever you want and you're, you're in total control this of the game basically well they, they work on all different types of skills computer skills math skills science um, English and it, it goes from the basics of being able to figure out geometry shapes sizes how are you going to fit individuals within a room how do you make them look like they belong there uh, I'll give you a great example when you play certain games or when you play different animations, you'll see a chair that is much larger than your character off in the background. And you know, that's where somebody didn't take the time, didn't storyboard, didn't go through and look at all their shapes or sizes within their math to be able to make everything look, you know, uh, the, scale. the scale, exactly. What I'm currently doing is working on a wall for game design. And this is, we have our book that we go through and it gives us basically step-by-step -step instructions on how to build our games and stuff. Like there's our soccer field we have to do. Mainly what we're doing is making backgrounds for it and we're using Microsoft Office to create a two-dimensional wall with shading to make it look a little realistic. The book here goes through step-by-step -step instructions. I mean, we're not just turned loose on them. We, there's instructions to help us go through and design it and make it look what, what he wants it. Yeah, we try to work on the same thing at the same time, so if someone needs help, we can help them with it to get them done with it quicker. Well, surprisingly, one of the things that I really like for my students to be able to leave this classroom with is not only computer skills, but it's teamwork building skills. A lot of our labs, a lot of our um, activities require two to three, uh, four people groups to work together to, a to depend on one person doing their job, another person doing theirs, to where we get to the final part of an actual game at the end. So I, I really like the team building exercises to where it kind of gets a lot of my students out of their comfort zone and interacting, talking, and communicating with other individuals. Maybe not in their clique or their friend group. At the end of the day, I like coming in here and doing this other than regular school work, but I'm still, I mean, it's work, it's just fun. 